decision? And what did you see from him to make that this week be the time to go? How did I know that was going to be the first question? Uh, yeah, Quentin's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a young, maturing guy. Uh, he's starting to do things the right way, off the field, on the field. I thought he played physical uh, in the couple weeks preceding him receiving that black shirt. I thought he tackled well. Uh, and he's just, you know, he's just maturing within the group. He's, he's catching up to the other guys. So I thought he was deserving of one, and we, uh, we awarded him with one. Yeah, well, I mean, you got a little bit of the unknown, right? You're probably going to see a, a young uh, freshman running back in there. Um, you don't know. He could be not as good as those guys. He could be better than those guys. He's just the, you know, was the next guy up because of his youth. Um, he could be the next great one. So we got to prepare uh, like it's the best running back we've seen back there. Uh, you know, and you never know if they're if they think that their uh, running game is not going to be where it needs to be. They might start throwing the ball around. They might have some some interesting wrinkles put in there. Um, obviously, they get in a lot of interesting personnel sets with multiple tackles in the game, multiple tight ends in the game. Uh, you got to be ready for all those different variations of formations, all those different variations of the run. You got to be ready for number 12 to come in the game and be a, a running quarterback and kind of overtake that wildcat role. You got to be ready for a running back to go back there and be the wildcat. You've got to be ready for the RPOs off the hard run action. So it, their offense poses a lot of difficulties and a lot of uh, intricacies that you need to get ready for on the, on the weekly basis. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't know what they're going to do. They've had a week to prepare. I'm sure they'll have some new stuff going on. Uh, you got to do the best you can do to play rules football, get your eyes clean, and uh, you know, do your job. And once you do that, then things kind of take care of themselves. Um, but they'll definitely have some, some things going. I'm assuming they'll have some, some trick plays or some gadgets coming out of there. Uh, but you know, definitely they'll have some new wrinkles coming off the of bye week and with new personnel in the offense. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, we've seen him a lot uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, he's a guy that's matured within the offense. I think he knows the offense um, as well as probably anybody in the program or that they've ever had being his third year uh, as a starter. Uh, I think he's got control of the offense. I think he does a good job with the football. Uh, you've seen him push the ball down the field a little bit more this year than he has in the past. Uh, you know, willing runner. You know, he's not really their quarterback run guy, but he definitely will take off on a scramble. He will pull the ball and go. Uh, but I think he's just got an overall good command of what they're trying to get done on offense. When you have a secondary as deep as experience as you guys have, what, what does that allow you guys to do? Um, you know, it's a big game. You're going to have to be prepared for that. And Oh, I mean, I, I think those guys are um, – they kind of know what they're, they're going to call. But the other piece of that is they understand splits and formation so well that they'll pull out a tool maybe that's not practiced or that maybe not be for that particular formation, but they understand the splits and they might change it. So they're, they're still communicating. Their, their communication is high. Um, and they're, they're letting people know what's going on. So I don't know if it's just a nod or anything like that. They're still communicating um, at a really high level, and they need to if they want to do some things that, you know, are maybe not necessarily drawn up on the diagrams for this week. Is that a good two at defensive back? Do you can look at some of the guys who aren't starters and say, man, those guys are, would be starters in a lot of other situations for a lot of teams? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you thought, you know, without getting our, our guys returning, any number of those guys could start. You know, Braxton could start. Uh, Noah Miles could be a starter. Um, shoot, Marquise Buford's playing really, really well right now. Um, but you got you got a lot of guys in there that that have quote unquote experience, whether it be on special teams or getting some reps in some of these games um, that are very valuable to us. Um, not only taking some plays off of the older guys, but also kind of developing them for their turn. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously coming off the injury, he didn't, we didn't get to see him much until the beginning of this camp. Um, he's shown in practice what he can do at corner, um, you know, in some limited game reps. But then I think he's really separated himself special teams wise right now. He made some unbelievable plays um, last week against Michigan. Um, and, you know, he just, he's shown that the speed, he's shown the confidence, he's shown the physical ability to make a tackle in space. Uh, he's shown us that he can cover in practice. He's done a really good job, and he's a very intelligent young man. Well, I, like we talked about, I mean, I think they're they're going to put an extra tackle in the game, two extra tackles in the game. They're going to make some of the same formations with different bodies. They're going to have a dead receiver. They're going to have live receivers. They're going to have some unbalanced. Uh, they're going to run their they're going to run their run plays, but they're going to do it out of like we said, multiple personnel groupings, multiple motions, multiple formations. And I think they're going to have a little bit of a formation of the week, uh, a little bit of a run of the week each week to try to throw everybody off and maybe complement what they really want to get done um, in the run game. Yeah, when it, you know, when an offense is going to try to hold on to the football, it's every play is that much more important. Uh, not that they're all not important every play. You know, some of these uh, offenses, you know, no matter what happens, um, you know, if they get one first down, it's probably not going to take a ton of time off the clock. With, with a team like this or any team that's trying to hold the football, every play is so important, and we need to minimize – you know, what they gain on first down and second down so you can get them into a third down situation. Uh, these teams that re get real big and can run the ball, they thrive in third and one and third and two. You need to keep them out of those situations and um, time off the clock. If we can get them to a three and out or, you know, a six and out, that gives our offense another shot to have the ball in their hands. What's the next step in the evolution of this defense? Uh, the next step is just – we need to play better, you know, um, error free. You know, they played a good football game the other night, but uh, too many explosive plays out there. Um, most of those were some communication errors, not necessarily communication, but a little bit of a, a bust here and there. Uh, so eliminate the explosives, cause more turnovers, um, get more sacks. That's probably the evolution.